I'm Pat Gunn, and this is a video on the topic of political correctness. I'm doing this video largely as a preface to later videos where I'll be uh, analyzing conflicts between personalities in the secular movement uh, on the topic of feminism, anti-racism, and so on. Uh, and I feel that I need to do a video explaining my uh, the framework that I use to analyze uh, claims of political correctness, um, largely because the term is used rather differently by uh, people all across the, the political spectrum. As you know, I identify as being a, uh, at least by, by American political standards, I'm pretty far on the left. Um, being a socialist, but to me that's primarily a commitment to my notion of economic justice. Um, and, uh, but it does incorporate concerns for the well-being of traditionally disadvantaged groups uh, in society. Um, people of various races, uh, issues about uh, gender roles in society, and things of that sort. And different people have different notions of what the best way to solve these problems are. And I think every, uh, or most people uh, agree, uh, or most people who consider themselves an activist on these topics uh, agree uh, on things like employment should be relatively uh, open to people of whatever their, uh, their identities even if that doesn't grant particular privileges or particular um, characteristic um, expressions of some of those identities. Um, and uh, we generally, hopefully, have a pretty broad consensus against bullying, uh, although, unfortunately, the the idea of what is bullying, uh, some people misuse the term. So we, we might need to get into a definition of that. And there's also a somewhat weaker but still present concern about social steering. Do we have the notion that for people of certain ethnicities, races, um, gender identities, uh, or genders, uh, that they're more suitable for certain tasks? Um, if we do, then we might we might be steering people towards or away from certain careers, or we might be refusing to hire people because we think uh, there there are people who who would say, for example, women can't be strong leaders, or uh, people of certain ethnicities just can't do math as well as other people, and those are problematic attitudes. Um, and if those attitudes are expressed then some uh, criticism of them is warranted. If those attitudes uh, happen to be held by people who are in charge of hiring, we probably agree that that's, that's a problem. Now where there, there's less agreement is on the topic of, uh, of what the duties are outside of those particular areas to have speech that's maximally supportive or even reasonably supportive of various uh, identities or various people that feel oppression. The claim of political, uh, uh, the term political correctness tends to be used to illustrate uh, a perceived oversensitivity um, on, on those topics. and. I do have an opinion on these, and I, I will be letting you know what it is in, uh, in these videos, but I would like to stress that I think reasonable people can differ in the conclusions that they reach uh, on this. And I don't mean to indicate much personal disrespect for people based on their views here, although the actions that it can inspire uh, I do tend to uh, to find those I, I can find those highly irritating, even if I think that a reasonable person might reach perspectives that lead them to 
behave badly or to offer bad criticisms, uh, criticisms that I really don't think should be offered. I tend towards a very narrow notion of verbal oppression. I think that any type of communication uh, or broadcasting to the world, if it's badly normative, meaning that if there's an actual intent uh, to, to say uh, without any tongue-in-cheekness to it, uh, that that some uh, that some people are more or less suitable for employment type things, or more or less uh, likely to be honest, uh, or um, or that it's appropriate to beat people up for uh, for for having a certain identity, or for seeing the world a certain way. Um, I see that as a problem. Uh, the notion, uh, if, if someone were to say women are only suitable in the kitchen, I think it would be very justified to raise a fuss about that, to try and not allow that person to be put into a position where they're doing hiring or firing, certainly, but also to offer social shunning uh, to a certain degree of people who uh, make such uh, statements. What I'm wary of and what I'm actually often opposed to is criticism of humor that um, that might poke fun at a minority's traditional cultural practices uh, or things that are not particularly respectful of minorities, uh, I think that generally we should be comfortable with, uh, with poking fun at just about everything over the sun. If it's not normative, then there's probably not a problem. Now this isn't meant to excuse harassment, uh, and by harassment I, I mean repeated contact uh, with someone who has made it clear that they don't want to be contacted. And this is on a one-on-one -on -one level. There, there isn't any such thing as a whole society harassing somebody. Uh, I think that that would be a misuse of the term. But if somebody's harassing you, uh, it, it, it typically would mean that uh, you're both in areas where, uh, in, in places, uh, in society, like in public places where you're ordinarily allowed to be, but you're forcing interactions on them in ways which, uh, which they don't want, and in areas that are generally of a, of a free choice. I know that that's, it's probably not the best definition of harassment, uh, but it's at least a, a working one, and it cuts out common abuses of the idea of harassment. And um, so I, I don't think people should generally be uh, harassed. And if somebody, uh, like the idea of stalking, uh, the idea of personal threats, we, we don't, nobody ideally is supporting those things. But deciding to be rude to, a, 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 to an identity, deciding to make fun of cultural practices or to even to criticize them, uh, deciding to, uh, on the other hand, deciding to appropriate them, looking through other cultures' practices like, uh, like uh, I guess, going through a rummage sale, grabbing ideas and reusing them in ways that are very different from the original context, in ways in which those ethnicities or people of those ethnicities or cultures don't approve, I think that's fine. Uh, if you look back through any, uh, if you look back at the history of any cultural practices, you'll typically find almost every idea is borrowed from somewhere. Almost every idea was lifted from somewhere. If you look at religions, uh, the way that they have influenced each other uh, over the centuries, 
original ideas are rare, and you can, trust, uh, you can track the mimetic flow from one culture to another, from one religion to another. And yeah, oftentimes unfortunate events were, did happen concurrently with that borrowing of ideas. But the borrowing of the ideas was never a problem. And even if it accompanied uh, oppression, it itself was not, uh, is not oppressive. So I categorically reject any, uh, any criticisms based on, um, on cultural appropriation. So that's, that's one of the things that's often lumped into this notion of political correctness. Uh, there's, um, there's also the notion of not being maximally validating to certain groups. Uh, groups often, particularly activist groups, they often develop a particular activist theory for how they prefer people talk about the world. Sometimes how people talk about them or people of their identity or their ethnicity or things, uh, things like that. And I don't think we're obligated to respect those wishes. I, I don't think, in fact, that there's any normative force bet uh, behind such a request. In general, unless I think that somebody's being malicious, uh, they should feel comfortable figuring out the terms that make sense uh, to them in categorizing the world, uh, including individuals, and in how they see individuals and groups and how they uh, try and fit society together. When I see uh, various Christian groups uh, arguing about whether Mormons are Christians, I'm not, I don't think that that's a matter that, that can be simply decided by the statement, Mormons self-identify as Christian, therefore they're Christian, and you're not allowed to question that. People can legitimately build different systems of categorization, and maybe by some of them a Mormon is a Christian, and maybe by some of them a Mormon isn't a Christian, and I don't think that we should feel any pressure either to take a stance or to decide that one stance is right on that, unless we, we have a personal stake in it, uh, or in, unless we take a, pers uh, a particular interest in it. But in general, I think a plurality of views on this topic is healthy. And, and so we might, not, uh, we might even decide not to recognize an identity at all. Uh, or not to recognize the characteristic claims they make about themselves. Uh, or if they decide that they want particular pronouns used, particular titles used, um, I, I don't think that we're obliged to, uh, obliged or, or even that there's a politeness issue, issue at stake uh, to, to honor those requests. In fact, I, I think pressuring people to honor those requests, uh, if you apply much pressure at all, you're the one being rude, not the person who isn't obliging you. Um, and so that's that's an area where that's a, that's another area where uh, traditional political correctness, uh, or where, where the the claim of political correctness has often been made. People don't like the way that somebody's talking and they decide that they feel uh, oppressed often for, well, it's, it's not that the feeling of oppression is, is necessarily invalid, but we don't need to recognize that they actually are oppressed. We could say, uh, I understand why you feel that way, but that doesn't fit my notion of oppression and so I choose not to recognize it, and that's fine. I don't think that, that we should attempt to recognize all forms of, uh, of oppression. Ideally, when we're thinking about social justice, we should be thinking about frameworks uh, of oppression. We should be building frameworks of oppression, and all the time along, we should be figuring out what kind of society we're trying to build. And the society which I've always hoped to build is one that 
that uh, where people uh, generally have thick skins, uh, where people frequently make fun of just about everything in society, ideally without being negatively normative, in the sense that they won't suggest um, they they won't suggest that we uh, again uh, hire or fire people based on identities, even we, if we choose not to recognize the identities, even if we find some identities definitively weird, bizarre, unhealthy. Um, uh, ideally, we're not bullying people based on, on these things. Um, ideally, we're not implying that they're untrustworthy, but we don't need to approve of them. And this is the the type of this is the message that my kind of uh, activism says to the world. We're not asking you to approve of all of these groups. You don't have to like them. You don't have to like the decisions that they made. But you should recognize the humanity of the people in the groups, and uh, have reasonable and normal care for their welfare. And, uh, and and this applies to basically all of uh, uh, all of the topics of social justice. Uh, you don't uh, uh, to a, uh, to a Christian, I would say. Although I personally strongly support gay marriage, I would say you personally don't need to recognize such marriage. You don't need to think uh, that that it's a legitimate marriage. You don't need to uh, personally honor it, but when it comes to employment type things, if you're an employer, uh, or when it comes to hiring, ty uh, firing type things, if you're an HR person, or just when it comes to treating people uh, like uh, like uh, complicated human beings as they are, even if you see it as a fault, uh, you should see the whole human. And you should still see uh, people of of, uh, of the diverse world as being human, and don't beat them up. Don't refuse to hire them or uh, or fire them for silly reasons. Um, and uh, ideally, don't stand in the way of uh, uh, of having reasonable legal uh, equality for it. It's okay to. Uh, like if, if, for example, you're of a particular religious group, it's okay to think that all the other religious groups are wrong, but that doesn't mean that uh, that, uh, that society should be happy with you acting on that in certain ways. You can still talk about it, uh, but, uh, but if, if somebody doesn't want to hear about it and they tell you uh, they don't want to hear about it, don't, uh, don't keep bothering them about it. Uh, but uh, and that's that that I think that's social justice in a nutshell as I see it. It doesn't mean that that we should be trying to make everybody maximally happy. It doesn't mean that we should cut out criticism or jokes, uh, even very offensive jokes. Uh, it just means that uh, and just with the ideals that uh, that at least I'm going for. Yeah, our, our society might at times be uh, unpleasant, particularly for the thin-skinned, particularly for people who don't like thinking that somebody is making fun of their uh, their ethnicity, their worldview, their faith. But we're going to do it, and we care about you. Uh, and those things are compatible, provided that you have uh, that you have the right versions of caring about someone. And of uh, of being comfortable with open expression, and part of uh, part of this commitment then uh, to, to this world that I'm hoping to build, it's cutting down the types of activism that attempt to go much further in uh, with their analyses of oppression. Uh, Movements that that find oppression in jokes, I categorically reject them, and I aim to oppose them. 
Uh, and admittedly, I'm, I don't have a lot of power personally, but I, I, I intend to argue against them. And I have argued against them in many places, and I will continue to do so. Uh, and I'm hoping that recognizing that not everybody is on that that type of policing of speech bandwagon will make people more comfortable with at least the type of uh, of social justice activism that I'm talking about, which is a moderate, second wave, anti-political cor uh, correctness type of so social justice, one that is based on on a relatively narrow and concrete notion of oppression, and one that still permits very significant uh, mental diversity. Uh, and in general, so I do draw some distinctions between uh, the types of things that uh, that I think um, should ideally cause people not to have their job, or just things that should cause a certain amount of outrage and maybe shunning, or at least shouting and grumbling in communities, and just saying you're talking from a theory that's not the theory that I prefer. Um, and I'll, I'll make a philosophical level argument against it whenever you, you uh, bring up your, uh, your opinions near me, but it, it shouldn't, uh, it's not like I'm going to shun you particularly over it. Um, I, I think that those distinctions are important and that when we're thinking about these issues and thinking uh, what's okay, we should consider various grades of, of okay because we generally have people in our family, in our social circle, who uh, or in our workplace uh, for that matter, who see these matters uh, slightly, moderately, or very differently than we do. And ideally, we're, we're not trying to live just in a bubble of people who see things that, uh, the same way that we do and talk the same as, as we do. Uh, but we're, we also still care about these issues uh, and we recognize that language can be a powerful thing uh, and certainly actions can be powerful. Uh, and, and so when we're laying out our activism, we, we figure out what, uh, what level of response is, uh, is merited by what types of, of words or deeds and as I said, I prefer a relatively narrow no, uh, conception of social justice because I don't think not feeling maximally validated is a form of oppression. Some people do. And, uh, but there are al also people who use the term political correctness itself much more broadly than I do. Uh, and there, I'm, I'm happy to criticize them, uh, just the same as I'm happy to criticize um, activists that I think are creating a culture of oversensitivity. Uh, it's not trying to find some happy medium between the groups, so much as I have uh, a particular theory of how I, how I seek justice and uh, and I'm willing to argue from any direction uh, for it. So that's that's basically uh, that's the end of, of this topic. I'm happy to engage in respectful conversation uh, in the comments section as usual. Uh, and I will be using this, uh, well, at least using the perspective that I've just laid out as a basis for future videos. So, I'm Pat Cunn, and I'm signing off.